Non-Monogamy Help is a podcast where your questions about open, non-monogamous or polyamorous relationships are answered. Our host, Lola Phoenix, will consult a licensed therapist with over a decade of experience to address your problems. Names and locations have been changed or censored to keep your questions anonymous. You're listening to Non-Monogamy Help, the podcast. Welcome to episode 44 of the Non-Monogamy Help podcast. I'm Lola Phoenix. Please send your questions to nonmonogamyhelp at gmail.com and they'll either be read in the podcast or the column anonymously. If you want to read the columns and listen to the podcast, you can go to nonmonogamyhelp.com. Subscribe to our email newsletter by going to go.nonmonogamyhelp.com forward slash email. And you can follow us on Twitter at nonmonogamyhelp.com or at nonmonogamyhelp rather. If you want to support the columns in the podcast, I'd really appreciate if you become a patron. Even $1 a month really, really helps towards all the costs to running the podcast and the columns, and just shows a general vote of support. If you donate $5 or more a month, your name, with your permission, will be read at the end of the podcast. You can do that by going to patreon.com forward slash Lola Phoenix. Let's get to this week's discussion question. If this is the first time you're hearing this, every week before I read the letter, I put forth a discussion question that you can use with your friends and your partners and anyone else to get to know them a bit more. I also answer it myself briefly to give you a little bit of context. This week's discussion question is, what often impairs your decision-making process? Lack of confidence, impatience, desire to please, overexcitement, etc. I think that what often impairs my decision-making process is over obsessing about every single potential way that something could go wrong or not you know basically go wrong I'd like to say go right but it's mostly just go wrong and that often makes it really really hard for me (laughs) to make a decision about anything yeah that's kind of where I'm at with that (laughs) very short answer because I know what impairs me (laughs) all right let's get to this week's letter My partner and I have always been non-monogamous and we've taken on the role, is that the right word, of each other's primary partners. Ever since the start of our relationship, my partner has found it easier to connect with people and has always had multiple partners at any one time. He's a dominant hetero cis male who's very physical. I on the other hand am submissive pan cis female who requires a much deeper emotional connection with people before anything sexual. So while I've tried, I've struggled to find anyone else that I've wanted to go on more than a first date with. Now, whether that's because I've just had bad luck or because I'm content with my current partner, I don't know, but I really wish I did. I should mention that, like you, I have anxiety, amongst other mental health problems, which have all been rearing their ugly heads as of late. As such, I'm beginning to feel very insecure over the number of connections he has and how easy it seems to be for him versus the lack of connections that I have. I understand it's not a competition, however, it's becoming clearer to me that I'm someone who needs a lot of emotion and support, which is currently having to stretch over other partners, work, family, friends, etc. I have support from friends and family as well, although I am wary that I have been using him too much as a crutch. However, irrespective, I feel my interest in wanting any other relationships may be dwindling. We spoke and my partner asked if my overall view on non-monogamy had changed or if this was just because I was feeling lower than usual at the moment and therefore more insecure, and I couldn't answer him. It's like I started having an internal argument with myself, my anxiety making it impossible to work out what was real. I started contemplating different boundaries and rules that would make me maybe feel better, but that's just unhealthy control. I then started to guilt myself for not being able to be as understanding as him, as he never worries when I've been on the on the odd date, but maybe that's because he's got so used to it never amounting to anything more, he's never really experienced me not having the capacity for him. I fear there will always be an imbalance between our respective partners, and while I'm learning to control my anxiety, I know it's not going to leave overnight. How I wish I could just wake up and magically feel secure. So I guess I'm just at a complete loss as to where the heck do I go from here. Before we get to this week's answer, I'm going to quickly plug this episode's sponsor, BetterHelp. Quite often in a lot of my columns and podcasts, I advise people to seek a polyamory-friendly therapist. For a lot of people, finding a locally funded therapist that can support polyamory is impossible or out of their budget. BetterHelp allows you to find therapists online that you can send messages to at any time of day, and they do offer some financial aid for folks. So you can also get 10% off of your first month using the promo code NOMINOCOMYHELP or going to betterhelp.com slash forward slash non-monogamy help. Let's get to this week's answer. So first and foremost, this is actually going to be pretty short because you're overthinking it. 
to, to put it lightly. You're really overthinking the situation. Like, you can... I, I am... I wouldn't consider myself to have any interest in dating. I don't actively date. I don't try to find other partners because dating sucks. I don't like it. <laughs> I don't enjoy the company of the vast majority of people. I don't really like people. The entire reason that I personally have chosen to do non-monogamy isn't because I like so many people that it's hard to choose or whatever. It's because I like so few people that if I do find someone that I like, I want the chance to pursue something with them. I'm kind of at the opposite end of that spectrum. And it is, it's partly anxiety. Like, my anxiety absolutely contributes to it. But I also just am not that interested in it. And I've experienced something very similar. Like, I, I have had to accept that no matter what kind of relationship I have, if I have a, a domestic relationship with someone, they're always going to be dating more people than me. Like, generally speaking, unless I find someone who is exactly like me, they're going to be dating more people than me. And I've... It's taken a while, but I've pretty much, you know just given up on the idea that I need to be out there pursuing dates all the time and for a long time I felt like I had to do that in order to be polyamorous or be non-monogamous I had to have multiple partners and that pushed me into doing a lot of things I didn't really want to do to going to a lot of places I didn't want to go and to just being in situations I had no interest in being and it, I, it also pushed me to feeling quite jealous that, you know, because I assumed that other people, you know, my partner having more connections with me somehow must be that they're better than me in some way. And, you know, it's hard to, to work through those feelings. But you, can, you could spend the rest of your life never, you know, finding another partner other than the person that you're with. It doesn't make you any less or more polyamorous than anyone else. Like, you're going to feel a lot of pressure, and you probably are putting a lot of this pressure on yourself. Especially because, like, I totally understand feeling like, ah, uh, I'm, I, my partner's kind of the only person I have to really go to. And they also have these other people, and I feel guilty about that. But, you know, it is what it is. And at any given situation somebody might be in the exact same situation with like a best friend or somebody else and as long as you're like having a dialogue together about it and as long as he's able to tell you like look I'm not able to provide you with this support right now and you know you, you said you had friends you said you had other people so you're not completely and utterly alone I think that it's just about keeping that in mind and having that dialogue and it doesn't have to be this big thing that's weighing over your head you know it's kind of like think of it if you were in a monogamous relationship and you both you were with somebody and you both owned a house and you had a mortgage and all this other sorts of stuff and then your partner lost their job and then you had to be the primary breadwinner for a while like you're gonna acknowledge that that situation isn't obviously ideal or that you know your partner may be relying on you economically more than is maybe something that you want but it doesn't have to be a relationship ending thing and I think as long as you were kind of conscious of it and as long as you are willing to like as long as you're willing to give your partner space if he needs it you know and and, and understand that he might be a bit over capacity then I don't see what the big issue is it seems like you're able to have discussions it seems like you're able to talk to one another you know and and it mostly it's just you beating yourself up mostly it's you like you because you're, you're having this kind of internal argument with you and you're, with yourself and you're trying to be like oh should I you know create these boundaries and rules and make me and then you realize that that's not going to fix the situation but then you're still beating yourself up and guilting yourself and you know oh he's has no problem with everything and I need all the support you know it is what it is different people have different constitutions for things and you know human beings are an interdependent species contrary to what and I'm assuming that you grew up in a similar culture to me and if I'm wrong then I apologize but contrary we we live in this in a culture that encourages individualism to the point that it's so often especially if if you are a woman especially if you're told by society that or you you know you get the message from society that you know you shouldn't you can be too needy you can have too many needs and we sort of think that we need to be these individual islands where we don't rely on anybody and we never need to ask anybody for help. That message gets really grained into us. But we, we're an independent, or we, sorry, interdependent species. We, you know, it's, 
there's a reason why solitary confinement is a form of torture because we need one another we need to talk to people we need to be in communities we need to be you know cared by others that's it's a human need and that's okay and he may not need that much support from you right now but that doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with you or wrong with him or wrong with the situation you know i mean i i have kind of just accepted at this point in my life like if I find another partner, like another, I mean, I've had dates and things like that, but like, you know, I've got one domestic partner and I've had some chances at things, but nothing's really stuck. And, you know, I, I do want to like, I want to have another live-in partner. That's like my ideal situation, but it may not happen. I may not find another person. I've had situations that I thought were going to turn into partnerships that didn't, but it'll happen when it happens. And I'm, but I'm not going to like, think that I'm less suitable or less capable or there's something wrong with me or you know it, it, I'm sure you've been in a situation where someone has been attracted to you who was a lovely person who you know there's nothing wrong with them you just don't feel anything for them and that's okay just because you are not you know that you don't get so many connections doesn't necessarily mean there's anything wrong with you and it might be, you know, my domestic partner right now connects with all sorts of people, finds it really, really easy to connect with people. And it could be because maybe I've had more trauma, maybe, you know, oh, all this horrible things that have happened to me and I don't trust people and I'm working on all that. Like I'm trying to work on, um, you know, not being so nervous and scared of new people and not seeing them as a threat and partially kind of like I think why I don't connect with people as easy as my partner does is because of some of that but I am where I am <clears throat> I'm in the situation that I'm in and you know I, it's not even necessarily about security it's just about you know just you, you can't you know, fix everything overnight and it, it might be partially because of kind of the stuff you've been through or even your situation, you know, being a being in a less marginalized position in multiple ways may make it a lot easier to find connections with people. I feel like my partner that I'm with now, my domestic partner, I feel like when we started our relationship, there were probably, you know, I feel like I've kind of corrupted them in a way. You know, I think they're they're less able to deal with some of the shit that they would have dealt with now that they're less able to deal with it now. So maybe they maybe they would, you know, can, you make connections with people and, and sometimes like they say horrible shit like that's my experience. You know, I'm, I'm interested in dating someone. They say something terrible. I'm just like, oh, fuck you know that sometimes can happen a lot to me some people can write that off some people are fine with that I feel like like I said my partner is probably less fine with that now you know I've kind of brought them over to the to the crumpy side of it but you know it, it you are kind of just overthinking it and beating yourself up a little bit when you don't you don't need five partners to be polyamorous you don't need 10 you don't need two you you by saying I'm polyamorous and that's or I'm non-monogamous and that's how I want to live my life that's enough there is no test there is no license you don't have to prove anything to anybody and if anyone wants to come along and say well you know how another mind they need to mind their freaking business mind their business are they are they the polyamory police mind the freaking business so you know try and I mean if you have access to polyamory friendly therapy please do try to find it you can absolutely find it um, out there, even, you know, if there's no one around in your immediate area to look at Skype therapy, look at phone therapy, just try and be a little less harsh on yourself. And, and, you know, for all the virtues of your partner, yeah, he's like you said, like he's being real understanding now, but maybe he hasn't had a lot of situations that have threatened his jealousy. So maybe that has a lot to do with it. But just, you know, trust that your partner is going to be able to tell you when when they're when they're not feeling up to things. You have to be able to extend that trust to, to him as well and trust that you have good enough communication that even if bumps do occur in the road, it's not going to throw everything off course and you'll be able to cope with it because you never know when something happens and you never know when, you know, life has a can be unpredictable and something can happen and all of a sudden someone needs your support, someone needs your help and you have no idea like what's going to happen in the future. So try not to overthink it too much. Give yourself a little bit of credit. 
and screw anyone who has something to say about how many partners you have or how often you date. You don't, you could give up dating right now and you'd still be just as polyamorous as you were if you didn't, if, if you continued trying to find a partner. You know, my, my position is just let it happen and maybe, maybe adopting that position will, like, it'll take some of the pressure off of your shoulders to find somebody else so that you can have someone else to rely on or whatever, like, just, it'll happen when it happens and just let it happen, okay? I hope that helps and good luck. Thank you for listening to episode 44 of Non-Monogamy Help. If you want to be awesome, you can donate to our Patreon. Uh, donating five dollars or more means that your name with your permission will be read at the end of the podcast this week's awesome people are laura boylan chris alvary jones juke kia and james wartell if for whatever reason you can't become a patron because life happens you can take five minutes out of your day to log into itunes or apple podcasts find our podcast and rate and review it that would be super helpful helps me get the podcast out to new people if it has a lot of really great ratings so even if you don't want to write a review and you just do a little five star rating that's really helpful yeah that's all for this week you'll get a new column next friday another podcast in a fortnight so sorry about the horrible background noise i still am recording this in my flat if you want to become a patron and you want to donate me studio space I may not use that because it's really super convenient to record it in my flat, I'll be honest with you. But it would be really appreciated if you want to do that. You can totally do that. Just get in touch. Nominomihelp at gmail.com. Anyway, enough of me being cheeky. Thank you so much for listening. (laughs) Goodbye. You've been listening to Non-Monogamy Help. Our podcast music has been provided by Chris Albury Jones at albury-jones.com and the art was made by Dom Jung at d-o-m-d-u-o-n-g.com. Thank you for listening.